In this video, we are going to look at Docker volumes um, in practice. And this is a simple Node.js MongoDB uh, application uh, that we're going to attach the volume to so that we don't lose the database data every time we restart the MongoDB container. <music> So let's head over to the console and I'm going to start the MongoDB with the Docker Compose. So this is how the Docker Compose looks like. We're going to start the MongoDB on container and the Mongo Express container so that we have a UI to it. So I'm going to execute the Docker Compose, which is going to start MongoDB and the Mongo Express. So when it started, I'm going to check that Mongo Express is running on port 8080. And here we see just the default databases. So these are just created by default on startup. Um, and we're going to create our own one for the Node.js application. And inside of that database, I'm going to create users collection. So these are the prerequisites or these are the things that my Node.js application needs. So this one here, in order to connect to the database MyDB, this is what we just created, MyDB, and inside of that to the collection called users. So let's start the application, which is running on port 3000, so here. And this is our app, which when I edit something here, will write the changes to my database. Now, if I were to restart now the MongoDB container, I would lose all this data. So because of that, the way to do it, as explained in the previous video, Docker volumes, we're going to use named volumes inside of the Docker Compose file to persist all this data in the MongoDB. So let's head over to the Docker Compose. So the first step is to define what volumes I'm going to be using in any of my containers. And I'm going to do that on the services level. So here um, I define the list of all the volumes that I'm going to need in any of my containers. And since we need data persistence for MongoDB, we're going to create a Mongo data volume here. Now, this is going to be the name of the volume reference. Uh, but we also need to provide here a driver, local. So the actual storage path that we're going to see later once it's created, it is actually created by Docker itself. And this is a kind of an information, additional information for Docker to create that physical storage on a local file system. So once we have uh, a name reference to the volume defined, we can actually uh, use it in the container. So here, I'm going to say volumes and here I will define a mapping between the Mongo data volume that we have on our host. And the second one will be the path inside of the MongoDB container. It has to be the path where MongoDB explicitly persists its data. So for example, if you check it out online, you see that the default path where MongoDB stores its data is data slash data slash DB. And we can actually check that out. So if I say Docker PS and go inside the container, it's minus IT. I can actually see data DB. And here is all the data that MongoDB actually holds. But this is of course, only the container. So when the container restarts, the data get regenerated. So nothing persists here. So this is the path inside of the container, not on my host, that we need to reference in the volumes here. So we're attaching our volume on the host to data slash data slash DB inside of a container. So for example, for MySQL, it's going to be um, var lib mysql for postgres it's also going to be var lib uh, postgres sql uh, slash data so each database will have its own so you'd have to actually uh, find the right one 
So what this means is that all the data with, that we just saw here, all of this will be replicated on a container startup on our host, on this persistent volume that we defined here and vice versa. Meaning when a container restarts, all the data that is here will be replicated inside of that uh, directory inside of a container. So now that we have defined that, let's actually restart the Docker Compose. And restart it. So once we create the data, and I'm going to collection, and let's actually change this one. here and update it so we have the data here so now that we have the persistent volume defined if I were to restart all these containers this data should be persisted so on the next restart I should see the database my DB collection and the entry here so let's do that I'm gonna do down Great, so let's check. See, the database is here, the collection is here, and the entry has persisted. So now let's actually see where the Docker volumes are located on our local machine. And that actually differs between the operating systems. For example, on a Windows laptop or a computer, uh, the path of the Docker volume will be at program data docker slash volumes. The program data docker um, folder actually contains all the other container information. So you would see other folders in this docker uh, directory besides the volumes. On Linux, the path is actually slash var lib docker volumes, which is comparable to the Windows path. So this is where the docker saves all this configuration and the data. And on the Mac, it's also the same one. Inside of this volumes directory, you actually have a list of all the volumes that one or many containers are using. And each volume has its own uh, hash, which is or which has to be unique. Um, and then slash underscore data will actually contain all the files and all the data that is uh, persisted. Let's head over to the command line and, and actually see um, the volumes that we persisted for MongoDB. Now, an interesting uh, note here is that if I were to go to this path that I just showed you in the presentation, which is var lib docker, see there is no such a directory. So that could be a little, little bit confusing, but the way it works on Mac specifically, on Linux, you would actually have that path directly on your host. But on Mac, it's a little bit different. And actually I learned this uh, fact from the Stack Overflow uh, discussion. So basically what happens is that Docker for Mac application seems to uh, actually create a Linux VM uh, in the background and store all the Docker information or Docker data about the containers and the volumes, etc., inside of that uh, VM's storage. So if we execute this command here, so this is actually the physical storage on my laptop that I have where all the data is stored. But if I execute this command, I actually get the terminal of that VM and inside here, if I look, I have a, a virtual different virtual fa uh, file system and I can find that path that I showed you here. So it's var lib docker. See, so I have all this uh, uh, docker information here. I have the containers. Um, folder and I have volumes folder. So this is the one we need. So, so that is actually go to the volumes. And this is a list of volumes that um, I have uh, created. And this is the one that came from our Docker Compose, right? This is the name of our app. This is, the, this is what Docker Compose actually takes as the name. You can actually take a look here. So when it's creating these uh, containers, it depends this name as a prefix and then there is MongoDB. And our volume has the same pattern. It has the prefix 
and then Mongo data. This is the name that we defined here. So now if we look inside of that Mongo data volume directory, we see that underscore data. And if you have seen my previous video where I explained the uh, different types of Docker, uh, Docker volumes, this would be the anonymous volumes. So basically here you don't have a name reference, it's just some random uh, unique ID, but it's the same kind of directory as this one here. The difference being that this one has a name. So it's more, e it's easier to reference it with a name. So this is anonymous volume, this is a named volume. But the contents will be used in the same way. Um, so here, as you see in this underscore data, we have all the data that MongoDB uses. So this will be where it gets the date, the default databases and the changes that we make through our application inside. And if I go inside of the container, so remember this volume is attached to MongoDB and is replicated inside of the container under path slash data slash DB. So if we go inside of the container, actually leave it here, go PS. db we'll see actually the same kind of data here so we have all this index and collection um, files just like we did in this one so now whenever we make changes to our application for example we change it to smith whatever and this will make the container update its data and that will cascade into this volumes directory that we have here. So that on the next startup of a container, when the slash data slash DB is totally empty, it will actually populate this directory with the data from this uh, persistent volume. So that we will see all the data that we uh, created through our application again on startup. And that's how Docker volumes work. In order to end that screen session that we just started, because Exit doesn't work in this case uh, somehow. On Mac, you can actually click on Control A K and then just type Y and the session will be closed. So when you do screen LS, you should see actually it's terminating. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.